In 19th century France, all expression through painting was controlled by the French Academy of Fine Arts. Appreciating depictions in traditional Renaissance-inspired detail of historical and religious figures, they idolized painters such as Jacques-Louis David, an 18th century neoclassic artist, while shunning others. The movement known as Romanticism grew in popularity throughout the arts, focusing on the optimistic concepts of the individual's singular power, as well as celebrations of nationalistic prosperity and hopes for a brighter future. But this optimism would dwindle as large-scale conflict became more prevalent during the industrial era and boundaries of science were continually pushed. Many painters shifted from depicting an idealized world to that which they saw every day, focusing on the common man instead of history or God. The main voice behind this new realism in France was Gustave Courbet, a man whose ideas influenced Claude Monet, a painter who wanted to push art's limits even farther, taking inspiration also from the romanticist painter J.M.W. Turner, who depicted bright, swirling colors. Another inspiration was the often shunned Edouard Manet, who was rejected by the art world for his scandalous subject matter. Claude Monet and his friend, the artist Pierre Renoir, pioneered a new method of art with their first exhibition in 1874 of 30 artists being received poorly. A journalist wrote that Monet's painting, Impression Sunrise, was just that, an impression, a quick sketch one makes before the actual work, not true art. The displayed artists took this criticism with pride, however, adapting the insult into their movement's name, The Impressionists. Made up mainly of around nine painters, their art continued to shock France into the next decades while growing increasingly experimental. While they viewed the unwilling Monet as their leader, it is Monet who has come to define Impressionism for us today. The American James Whistler, along with Monet's rejections from the Salon, led to the Salon of Rejects, begun by Napoleon III in the early 1860s to display the denied art. But with the Franco-Prussian War, his empire soon collapsed. The Salon of Rejects united the early Impressionists, but the young Frédéric Basile was tragically killed in the horrific war. And as the years dragged on, the artists began to fracture over such questions as if they should allow George Seurat, the creator of pointillism, to join them, or if they should lift their ban on submitting work to the traditional Salon, which rejected them in the past. Paul Zazanne was the first to leave, soon followed by Renoir, Degas, and others, as Impressionism, the revolutionary art movement, soon fell apart. However, soon after its demise, post-Impressionism, led by Cezanne, soon began, with minds like Vincent van Gogh and Paul Gauguin, but I will address them another time. Post-Impressionism led into the modernism close to follow. In Impressionist paintings, the goal is not to paint realistically, but instead to capture the unique playing of light in a scene caught at a glance. Depicting images of nature or the ordinary person, the movement related heavily to the interests of the many, while the artists often created the paintings in real-time outdoors to capture the truth of the world in quick brushstrokes. This does not mean that all Impressionism was not in the vein of realism, however, as is evident by many Impressionist works. The major figures within the movement have gone down in history as masterful artists, including three women, with Bert Morisot being considered one of the most subversive and experimental artists in her day. The influence of Impressionism can be seen outside of painting as well, such as the stream of consciousness writings of James Joyce or the swirling compositions of Claude Debussy. The last major step of art before modernism, the beauty and serenity conveyed by these incredible minds will never be washed away from humanity's sight.